of the highest density possible. So we normally solidify mercury to do this. People think it's a miracle. We have created spaces like this. If people just walk in, you simply tears start flowing. Simply the intensity of the place. Namaskaram Sadhguru. I would like to know about uh, signs of consecration and if I'm worthy of knowing it, how do I go about it? <laughs> well, uh, we must uh, congratulate uh, Yelda because in the next three weeks uh, she will be a mother. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is terrible gender discrimination <laughs> because only women are ever allowed this privilege. <laughs> So, she was talking to me about how she is conscious when, when there is a situation in any place, given place, without any logic to it, conscious of certain energies and how different people and different forms and different spaces impact you. So the science of consecration is just this. The best material to consecrate is a human being. It… because of all the physical forms on this planet, this is the most evolved physical form. The easiest thing to consecrate is a human being. But the problem with the human being is, every few minutes they'll make a U-turn. You can consecrate them right now, by tomorrow morning we don't know. So first of all, to get them committed to stay with whatever is given to them is a big issue, especially in today's world. Because of that, we consecrate other forms. We always want to choose a form or a substance, first of all, which is of the highest density possible because physical form, its strength and its integrity depends upon its density. So we normally solidify mercury to do this. This is called as rasavaidya, which means it is a technology of solidifying mercury. People think it's a miracle. No, it's not a miracle. We use mercury as a process of consecration. The idea is it will change the very energy in which you are. Well, today our modern science is still busy studying physical things. Everything physical about you has been gathered from outside, isn't it so? Hello? What you call as my body is just a piece of this planet. You slowly gather it by the food that you eat. So if everything physical about you is just something else, not you, what you gather cannot be you. What is you? Definitely there is a dimension beyond physicality. If you ignore that, there's simply no life. But right now, still the logic, the human logic which thinks it is scientific is still at this level of logic that except what I can measure on the instrument does not exist. So actually all of you do not exist because you cannot be measured. This happened to me, I don't subject myself to these indignities anymore. <laughs> Way back because of some obligation I had to… I was in some institute, they said we want to measure your gamma waves. I didn't know I had gamma waves <laughs> They said, no, there are gamma waves in your brain, we will measure it. So they put fourteen electrodes into my body and they said, uh, meditate. I said, I don't know how to meditate. <laughs> they said, you teach everybody meditation. Yes, I do because they don't know how to sit still. <laughs> if you want, I will sit still. But this is the whole problem. Their problem is they want what kind of meditation? They want a name and the process and they want to measure the result. So I am not going to give them that pleasure. I said, if you want, I'll sit still. So I simply sat. After about twenty minutes, with some metallic object, they're hitting that funny place in your elbow, you know, yeah. where it hurts most <laughs> Then I thought it's part of their experiment and I sat there. Then they're hitting my ankle, my knee. It became quite consistent and painful. <laughs> 
Then I opened my eyes and said, am I doing something wrong? Why am I being beaten <laughs> They said, no, uh, according to our uh, instruments, you are dead <laughs> I said, uh, this is a great diagnosis you have <laughs> But then they thought through and they said, uh, no, it looks like your brain is dead. <laughs> I said, I will stay with the first opinion. <laughs> dead like this is okay with me, brain dead if you give me a certificate. <laughs> That's not going to be good. Why I am saying this is, the essential life that you are, you think you are going to measure it in some instrument? Only physical processes will measure, isn't it? And you know, everything physical about you is from outside, it's not yours. Hmm? It's not yours, it's just a piece of the planet. So. You can't be measured, so you don't exist. What a great conclusion are you making? So what is consecration is a dimension of energy which is not physical in nature, but it's life, concentrated life, let's say. Consecration is a way of creating a very concentrated life process. If you walk in, it's like that. So in certain cultures, particularly in India, every street we consecrated at one time. But people slowly misunderstood, thinking these are temples for worship, whatever, it all went into all kinds of things. But still there are fantastic spaces of consecration in that culture, you must come and experience this. These days they are measuring some bio stuff and all, they are saying some fantastic things happening, I don't know what their meters are. But I know this, Yelda is saying she knows this, if you walk into a space, you know how alive or dead that space is. So is it measurable by something? No, only life knows life. In life meets life, it knows. When life meets death, it knows. <laughs> Is there some instrument to measure this? No, because all your instruments can only measure physical processes. So consecration is that concentrated life process. No human being should live in unconsecrated spaces. If you care for humanity, especially children, especially children below fourteen years of age, Believe me, if you make sure they spend a certain amount of time in consecrated spaces, you will not have any of this nonsense about ado adolescence problems. See, right now, toddler… if you're an infant, diaper problems, toddler means he's running away problems, adolescent means some other problem, middle age means crisis, old age means horrible. <laughs> when are you going to live, I'm asking <laughs> You're looking at life process as a problem, it's not a problem. You are making it a problem because you are trying to fit life into your intellect. No, your intellect fits into this life perfectly well. If you try to fit this life into this intellect, it's not going to work. So consecration is a dimension and a science and a technology with which you concentrate life in such a way, if you walk in, your whole energy system bursts forth. You will see we have created spaces like this, if people just walk in, Sheer intensity, simply tears start flowing. They don't know why. Simply the intensity of the place, simply tears start coming. You must every day, your cheek should be washed with tears of love, joy and ecstasy. If this doesn't happen, you're not living yet.